composer David Lang. Thank you so much for having us, David. Thank you very much, Alex. And it is true, I am composer David Lang. The first and the most important question yeah. we ask all of our guests is, what is your relationship to kettle corn? Um, well, I know a lot of the people involved, which is really great. The food. Oh, the food. <laughs> my relationship to kettle corn? Yeah, well, to the, obviously, to popcorn itself. My relationship to popcorn is about, I'd say, a foot. <laughs> you know, um, it's delicious, and I'm going to eat some right now just to prove that I can do it. I'll, I'll join you in it's that. It's delicious. I'm sure I'm going to continue doing this during this entire time. So, in with kettle corn new music, one of the things that we're trying to explore is concerts outside of the traditional concert experience. And I know that Bang on a Can and other things, you've played a big role in changing things over the last you know, 20 or 30 years. I think one of the things for us at the beginning of Bang on a Can was trying to figure out how to make it so that concerts weren't so scary. Because I think um, having grown up in the modernist era from teachers who wanted us to write the thorniest, most complicated and hard to listen to music possible, um, that all went in a package of making sure that the environment of performing the music was also as uncomfortable and miserable and, um, and uh, artificial as possible. And it really felt to us as if um, music was supposed to be presented in something that reminded you of your chemistry lab in college, where um, you're sitting around and you're in these hard plastic chairs with chemicals in front of you and someone is shouting scientific knowledge um, at you as fast as possible and that was not a very fun image and so um, you know we just thought there are places where people go to enjoy music they go to clubs they go um, they like to go places where they can listen to music and um, and drink a beer at the same time and we just thought if you could merge those two worlds make something really um, comfortable and casual um, and make the listening as intense as possible and make the performance, you know, keep, keep an incredibly high level of performance, um, that you'd actually have the best of those worlds. What, what is music? Is it, is it merely something that entertains us on a Friday night or a Saturday night? No, I think music can be the music from the chem lab. You know, I don't think that um, the point of it is to say that one kind of music is right and one kind of music is wrong. I think um, but you need to... to um, I think build uh, a, a network of opportunities which are open enough mm -hmm. so that each piece can be the unique communication um, from each composer to the listener. I really think the most important thing is that we um, all have something to say to each other, um, composers and non-composers alike, and what will make a better world is if we um, make it possible for us to um, get our individual messages across mm -hmm. um, in the way which makes it most um, easy to receive them. What do you like getting from a composer the most when you're listening to a piece? You know, one of the things that's weird about people from my age is that we, we did actually grow up in this era where music was supposed to be um, uh, abstract, that music was supposed to be as unemotional and as detached and as um, intellectual as possible. And, um, and I get that and I appreciate that music and I love that music because that's the music I was raised with. But one of the important things that happened to me when um, I was a little younger than I am now was I tried to remember why I wanted to become a musician in the first place. And I think it was partly because I heard this music and I was getting some sort of nameless emotional... Um, hard to pin down message from these pieces that there was something about them on an emotional level um, that got to me and so after I got out of school and started trying to figure out what kind of music I was going to do myself I started remembering that that was my first impulse you know, that's what I like about listening to other people's music is I, I feel like it's the key to something about their emotional lives and I very self-consciously tried to put that as the foreground issue in many of my pieces. You know, it's like how to how to make something that's an opportunity for someone to get an emotional message. But I want to make a kind of music which gives people the opportunity to project whatever emotional life they have into it. And um, sometimes that's can be done by making a piece that's really incredibly boring. Mm -hmm. And people can sit there and go, well, I'm either listening to this boring piece or I'm going to think about my day. And at the end of that hour, you go... Yeah, that was nice to think about my day. Thank you for giving me that chance. Where does David Lang go to get his musical fix? Um, you know, I listen to a lot of music everywhere, basically. You know, I mean, I listen... Um, you know, I go to a lot of concerts. I have a lot of students. 
Um, I relentlessly check things out on the internet. Um, I have a huge CD collection and I am constantly buying music and downloading music and um, I'm curious about what's going on and that goes for even music that I, I sort of already know I'm not going to like. You know, I feel like if it's if it's um, interesting and important and might come up in a conversation at some point, you know, I really want to know about it. Also, because I've started um, doing more curating, so, you know, I'm through Bang in a Can, you know, obviously I've been curating for a long time, but... Um, but I've started curating other people's music organizations, music festivals and music programs. And um, so I really have tried to um, keep up with what a lot of people are doing. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Alex. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah. And thank you very much for the popcorn. I mean, the kettle corn, excuse me. <laughs> cool.